Now, now one of the movies that uh, that I remember quite well is you made for uh, the great Raoul Walsh, Objective Burma, oh, yeah, yeah. with Errol Flynn. Yeah. What was the Objective Burma and the Walsh experience like? Well, uh, Walsh, of course, had been a matinee idol as a kid. Yes. I know that was that book you gave me. He was actually John Wilkes Booth in Birth of a Nation in 1950. Walsh, as an actor, uh, assassinates Lincoln in the movies. But All I remember was him, and he had a patch. He wore yes, he lost his eye. How Walsh did. And all he ever said to any actor was he had one of two things. Roll them, boys, and put a lot of life in it. <laughs> <laughs> or, nice and easy now. That's all he said. Yeah. And he knew when to say which one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Errol Flynn, I mean, this was really at the kind of the height of his notoriety. What? I was just looking at some pictures of him the other day. God, he was a good-looking human being. What a gorgeous <laughs> man he was. Yes. Yes. He was, a, and a, 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 as far as I was concerned, a, a great gentleman. He was, couldn't have been. I used to drive out to locations with him and the, the studio car, yeah. and we'd talk at a great length. And he was a, a, a gentleman, considerate. Uh, you know, he was deadly. They had two guys they hired to keep the women away from him. <laughs> it's true. They, everywhere he went, yeah. he was followed by the hordes of women. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, he and John Garfield, I think, yeah. because you, you made a picture with Garfield, yeah. and uh, I think it was the same thing with, with, yeah. with John Garfield right. as well. Yeah, and I guess Flynn, Flynn was very generous with the crew as far oh, yeah. as buying yeah. food and you know, oh, all yeah. of that stuff. Jack Warner was very chintzy about location food in those days. This was during the war, right? and he used the war as an excuse to make these terrible meals they sent out. <laughs> And Flynn finally came out. I remember one day we were up yeah. above the studio in the mountain up there above Warner Brothers. And it was hot and sweaty and it was a miserable shoot. We were all right. filthy, dirty. And uh, <laughs> Flynn came in and they brought the lunch and he looked at it and he said, he called the assistant director over and he said, take this back and give it to Jack Warner mm -hmm. and tell him I'm taking care of lunch. <laughs> And he ordered, and Frank Tang was a, a, a Chinese guy at a restaurant called Tang's. And 40 minutes later, Frank Tang's restaurant had brought lunch for the whole cast and crew out to location. And we had, <laughs> that's where we had lunch. Paul Paterni told me a story one time where he was on the set with Flynn, and they're outside the soundstage smoking a cigarette, and some messenger comes up with a message for Errol from Jack Warner. So he opens it up, and it's from Jack saying, you know, you've been calling your wife and you have $3,000 in long-distance phone bills. This is when he was married to Patrice Wymore, yeah. living in Jamaica. You need to pay this. So he said, Errol turned the note over and wrote, Dear Jack, I'm willing to forget about this if you are. <laughs> and sent it back to him. And that was, that was, that was Errol. So, um, uh, Jack, Jack Warner, I mean, uh, uh, one of the legendary moguls, great picture maker, but I think at heart he really wanted to be a comedian. Oh, so, <laughs> but not a once, good one. Once a year, they had, from all over the country came the distributors and exhibitors, and they had a big party on a soundstage. Now I'm talking 400 people. Right. You know, and a huge banquet and everything. And everything was great until about three quarters of the way through when you, people started, oh. Because here came Jack. And he had to t get up and talk and tell stories. It was so, it was appalling. <laughs> he could screw the best joke you have ever seen. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but he read, somebody said he, he had no talent except the, the ability to pick winning European directors. Yeah, that's Which true. Which he did. He brought that's over true. all these marvelous European directors. That's and, and true. Signed him a Warner Brothers. That's true. Litvak, Curtis. Negolesco, uh, yeah. they were everybody. Yeah. Um, let me back up a little bit. You were working at Warner Brothers during the war, and then the war ended, and you were working on a movie. And what was what happened? I it's always been an object of curiosity for me. What happened at the movie studios when the war was over? It's the most unforgettable day of my life. We were shooting. Uh, I forget what it was. Anyhow, I was in the stands. Well, they had stands there that and they let audiences in to see some of the shooting. Right. Now, this was the very first time that had been done, by the mm -hmm. way. And I was seated in the stands, and it wasn't Curtis directing it. I forget what it was. Anyhow, we're halfway into a shot, 
And suddenly the door opened, the stage, and Jack Warner came in and said, we stopped shooting, everybody stopped shooting, the war is over. And we looked at one another, people started screaming, we went outside, people were coming from the offices, people were coming from wardrobe, from makeup, uh, contract players, uh, uh, laborers, everybody came out of the streets, were screaming and dancing, and finally at the end of it, I'll never forget, Eric Korngold, that great, great composer, came stomping out of the music building with the whole Warner Brothers Orchestra marching along, playing God Bless America. Oh, what a moment. What a moment. What a moment. Now, you, you, you left Warner Brothers and you got to work with James Cagney. Yes. Uh, what was the, the Cagney? And I, noticed, I noticed whenever we talk about James Cagney, you always call him Mr. Cagney. Yeah. What was that experience like? Well, uh, what can you say? Look at that man's career. I mean, look, yes. at, look at him. He's, he's, he's magic. Yes. He's an absolute magician. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was the quietest gentle man. Mm -hmm. He looked amazing because, you know, here's this. He's yeah. boxing, killing son of a bitch. Right. And it, 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 <laughs> he's just the gentlest man in the world. Right. So considerate and so nice. It helped me an awful lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we had a director who, who must stay nameless, uh, <laughs> uh, who, was, who was very, very difficult. It's a movie called The Time of Your Life. And I played a, a pinball machine right. throughout the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it was about the ninth or tenth week of the shoot, we'd now been in this one set, it's a bar. Mm -hmm. That's where we were the whole time. And mm -hmm. With James Wong Howe, one of the most temperamental cameramen who ever lived. And one of the greatest. And one of the greatest. Mm -hmm. and, and a set, that one whole side of the thing is the bar mirror. <laughs> so you can imagine the troubleshooting, because everywhere where you had to move the lights and everything, all the time to adjust to that damn mirror. Right. <laughs> but I, I remember my big scene came, and I, I hit the jackpot on, on the machine. All right, so the machine and, and goes the crazy, machine you goes go crazy, crazy. And they, they fixed it like the, it had fireworks went off. <laughs> <laughs> they really rigged that machine. And when it went off, everybody applauded and screamed. Right. And I did my, my special little speech. Mm -hmm. And the director said, cut. That's it. <laughs> Jimmy Cagney said, lunch. And yes. he took me to lunch. Right. And he calmed me down because I was about to flip out there. I was, he, you know, the I'd director be, sent you through multiple takes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like 17, 18 takes. Uh -huh. was, you know, and then and eventually they used take two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, it was maddening. And Cagney calmed me down and uh, could not have been nicer because you know, it was it's his picture to begin with. He owned it. <laughs> yeah, he was the producer. <laughs> right, as right. Dick Powell was the producer. That's of right. Pride Danger. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And yeah. little Sam Wiesenthal, who nobody remembers, right. but right. produced that right. picture. 